This is Kubin Cassius for IFL TV. We're at the Frotch and Groves Undercard press conference here in Manchester. With me fighting on the bill, Stephen Smith. How are you, Stephen? Yeah, good, mate. Yeah, it's been a quite a strange couple of weeks for you because you weren't sure whether you was going to be on this bill and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You are on the bill now and uh, you're going to fight for the WBC international title against Sergio Manuel Medina, which is going to put you on route, isn't it, uh, for possibly a shot at that title next year? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the winner's got to fight for the WBC silver title within 90 days, so you know, it, it, it's a big opportunity for me. And yeah, like you say, the, the last few weeks haven't been ideal. You know, people come into fights saying, oh, it's been the best camp ever and the fittest ever. And you know, I'd be lying if I said that. Don't get me wrong. I've been in the gym. Joe's been training me hard, and I've been, you know, training for the chance that you know I might be able to fight. But you know, it's not ideal. But you know, I feel good, and you know, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy and allowed to fight. Can you tell me a little bit about your um, the decision to relinquish the British title? Um, well, to be honest with you, yeah. you know, the plans now, as you can see, are to move on to the world, the world stage anyway. So there's not really much much more I have to add than that. But you know, the overall all what's been going on before and and you know, trying to get me to all the obligations or whatever else. You know, it's just in my eyes, I've given up to move on to the world the world stage. And obviously, you had a situation with. Uh, the li- the li- your licence being taken away from you, which is now back, so that's that's all sorted out now? Yeah, yeah the, the board like suspended me due to, you know, w- w- waiting for the hearing type of thing, you know, suspended until the hearing, but you know, now the hearing's been adjourned, so they said I'm allowed to fight and I'm happy about that. So this situation, obviously, with your fight this Saturday, uh, the, as far as I understand from Eddie Hearn, the winner is will face Sosedo for the WBC silver title. Yeah. Which, if you get that, win that, that will put you in line for a, a possible clear shot of that title. Yeah, you know, as I say, it's a brilliant opportunity for me because, you know, to say they're having a silver title, you know, I've seen him, and um, you know, he's good, he's tricky, but you know, very beatable, and you know, it puts you puts you in line, probably next in line for the WBC title. You know, it, it's similar to to a final eliminator type of thing, so. Should be good, but it's a nice title to have as well. The WBC Silver title. It's the same belt as the WBC title, which is my favourite belt. So, you know, obviously, you know, it's a good step on the ladder towards it. How's your training been for this? Obviously, we weren't sure whether, hundred percent, whether you were going to be on this card. How's that been? Have you just carried on training as normal? Yeah, I mean, physically, Joe, Joe's just had it. You know, I'm, I'm, I've got to train like I'm fighting, and he's been giving me all the right way to all the things leading up to a fight like like I should do. It's just been. More mentally tough, you know. It's hard sometimes, you know, keeping your head on it and go, going to bed, sticking to your diet when, you know, you, you know, you might not be fighting. It's more the mental side, what's being more frustrating, getting a bit stressed. But, you know, the physical side, as I say, I couldn't ask for more from Joey. You know, everyone knows what he puts in, and you know, he's training me like normal. Obviously, <coughs> you're part of the undercard for Frost and Groves, and Frost and Groves has kind of taken over this week. Uh, the hysteria around it, but we forget there's a quality undercard underneath it with a lot of good fighters on it so um, first of all Frotch and Groves how do you see this going Stephen? Um, I think it's it's a very good fight I think it's, it's captured the imagination I think a lot of people you know, I've, seen, I've seen a thing you put on yourself last night was how close the, the public have got it well, I think they're, they're both good I think they can both punch I just think Frock takes the shot a little bit better and I think although Groves might be leading I just I can't see him keeping Frock off him for 12 rounds and I think Frock will get to him and Frock will win yeah, for, I mean, people don't know. I'll just I'll put a tweet out to say retweet or favourite for who. And I think it was, for example, if Frotch was on 300, Groves was on about 260, 265. Yeah, was there wasn't there wasn't too much in it, you know. And that's good. That's what you want in um, you know, in British boxing as, as a viewer, as, as a fan, you want to see fights like that. And you know, as a boxer, from our point of view, you know, it's great to box on that undercard and be around it. Where you know, it is a proper live fight. People people are coming, not knowing what's going to happen and excited and you know you walk in as you say 100 people walk in it's split 60 40 of who do you think is going to win so just make sure the better atmosphere uh disappointed obviously not fighting with your brother callum this weekend yeah i mean i'm good to for him but you know i'm happy you know he, he, he took the chance to, to, to make sure his hands heals properly you know if he would have rushed it he could have made it worse and you know, he couldn't put himself for a long time and you know, the momentum he's building up at the minute with it, the way his career is progressing it, it was too much of a risk for him so you know, he, he, he's took the right procedure, he's getting his hands sorted and we'll be back soon. I'm sure you'll be to be fighting on probably a show in Liverpool next next year anyway. So. Yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to fighting with Callum. You know, as a pro, I fought with Paul and Liam, I've never fought with Callum, so 
uh, it would be good something to look forward to for us and oh, another, another thing we haven't done. Did your brother tell you about the phone call we got the other day from me? No. Ask him about it. Which one, Callum? No, your brother Paul. Paul, all right, I'll ask him. He, um, I phoned him and then he phoned me back, but he didn't notice my number. So I started winding him up. He lasted about five seconds. He went, fuck off, you dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then I rang him back up and I started giving it to him down the phone. Gang, fucking Paul Smith, blah, 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 blah. I put the phone down again. Tell him to fuck off, put the phone down again. Then I text him saying it's Coogan, he's bellend. <laughs> and he ran me back and went, yeah. I had him twice. <laughs> Just ask him. So I like him. He, he, he's not the hardest to wind up, to be honest. I mean, he's good on Twitter. He, he, he won't take nothing on Twitter. And, you know, but on, on the phone or face to face, he's not the hardest to wind up, to be it's, fair. It's funny cause he's pretty quick to bite. <laughs> Stephen, right? In the second phone call, when he's at Paul Smith, he went, no, but it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was him. Uh, Paul, if you're watching, uh, I'm sorry, mate. But, yeah. <laughs> He'll be all right. He'll, He'll be back, I'm sure. He'll be all right. All right, Stephen, listen, look forward to this week. Like I said, um, hopefully you get past Mr. Medina. Yeah. And then, listen, I'm sure Eddie will know the right path to get you onto that shot at the WBC title. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, thanks very much, mate. Right. Nice one. This is Coogan Cassius here with Stephen Smith here in Manchester for IFL TV. Thank you very much.